a way that I personally have experienced the socialization of gender, and this was a fairly easy topic for me to pick, was Barbie dolls. Growing up, me and my sister both played with Barbie dolls, and we actually inherited um, all this from my mother, including a dollhouse. So Barbie, if anybody doesn't know, um, Barbie is girl doll figures in that they wear pink, wear makeup, they always appear flawless. Barbie is supposed to be the most beautiful thing, perfect hair, perfect body. Barbie is a character that has the perfect boyfriend, Ken, um, the perfect life, perfect house. And if anything ever went wrong with Barbie, it was a big deal. Um, lessons that I was taught growing up about socialization of gender is that Barbie was a girl toy. And so my sister and I grew up playing with Barbie dolls, as I said, and in fact, my brother did too. But my mom always did think it was weird and expressed it as he plays Barbies too. And so when she told people that he played with us, they were always like, wow, your brother plays Barbies? But in reality, he just wanted to play with his two older sisters and it never came across to him that Barbies were a girl toy. The most common thing about gender socialization is that dolls are for girls and uh, trucks are for boys, and Barbie is pos possibly the most famous doll. But in more recent days, Barbie fans have been trying to come up with more variations to, be to get Barbies to be more gender neutral, which includes variations of the Ken doll, so they've been coming out with more boy, dar more boy Barbies. And in fact, Laverne Cox actually inspired the first ever trans Barbie doll, which I think is pretty cool. And so, this is an example of social construction of gender because need I explain more that Barbies are clear evidence of the social construction of gender. <laughs> Barbie might be the epitome of the social construction of gender. An article from medium.com explains that in 1959, Mattel, a toy company, created the Barbie, a pale colored, light eyed, blonde hair, slim doll for girls. And it specifically said for girls. Girls everywhere strived to look like Barbie, and Barbie became, quickly became very popular, and she had her own book series, movies, and more lunchboxes, and what became a doll, or what began as a doll, quickly became the person that all girls wanted to try to emulate for the next four decades, which was a really long time. And it was quote-unquote the most famous thing about social construction of genders that girls are supposed to like pink, and be into fashion and wear makeup. And in fact, Barbie is and all of those things and left a mark on what all girls should be. Barbie has also been coming out with more, many variations of the Barbie doll because they were wanting something more realistic. And so examples would be like they came out with Army Barbie, Presidential Barbie, Dr. Barbie, but it didn't do much change because Barbie was still her slim, face full of makeup self. Um, how I think this related to the socialization in terms of my agency is that growing up, I supported that Barbies were girl toys and they weren't for boys, but that's just kind of how I was taught in my own home is that my mom bought these girl toys for me and my sister and these boy toys, boy toys from my brother. Like even in indoor recess growing up in schooling, like girls had the baby dolls they could play with and boys had the trucks and the building blocks they could play with. In my own house, my mom bought my sister girl toys and my brother boy toys. Though there was one time my mom did buy my brother a Ken doll so that he could play Barbies with us. Um, I didn't know any better of the social constructions of gender. That I didn't know any better that they just didn't simply exist. And today I believe that kids should be able to play with whatever toy or whatever doll they want to.